I can hear Elsie coming down the street. You two brick walls. You must have bionic ears. No, it's this sixth sense I've got when someone's having bad thoughts about me. You know she never forgive us running that wedding outfit. What did I tell you? Hello, Elsie. Have a nice day. Nice. I've spent the whole afternoon arguing over sewing thread with Ivy Tilsley. That one could talk the hind leg off a donkey. And when she's done that, she'd clout you with it. I've got tea on. It's beans on toast with a fried egg on top. Oh, another gourmet meal. Sardines on toast last night, beans on toast tonight. It's like living at the Ritz. Now, make yourself comfortable, Elsie. Now, here's your slippers. Oh, all right. Go no further. What have you broken? Broken anything. You must have done. Here's her discovering where we keep the pans for the first time, and you running around with my slippers, which incidentally I shall not need, because as soon as I've got my breath back, I'm going down to the Rovers for an invigorating gin. Now then, stop messing about. What have you done? We just wanted to give you a nice welcome home, that's all. The sort you wouldn't get if you went back to an empty house. Oh, I see you do now. Oh, we've been searching and searching for flats again, Elsie. We looked all this dinner, we never had anything to eat, did we, Susie? We saw three. They were all terrible. The best of them had a damp patch as big as an elephant above the bedhead. Do you know what made my chest wheezy? Just all right, all right, all right. Stop the violins. You needn't move out of here this weekend. Oh, thanks, Elsie. Oh, yeah. Terrific. Yeah, honest. terrific muggins. But this means to say you keep on looking for a place of your own. Oh, we will, honest. Yeah. Look out, stomach. And you must admit we have our uses sometimes. Oh, ah, yes. Every time you want something or whenever you've done something diabolical like ruining that skirt of mine. Oh, we're, we're dead sorry about that, Elsie. You know we are. Mm. I went to that new cleaners in the precinct the other day. They said they can get it as good as new and it won't cost me a penny. How come? Oh, well, you'll be paying for it, won't you? Well, you will, won't you? Of course we mm. will. Anyway, I heard you the bell at the ball, even without your secret weapon. Well, of course, Ina Sharples is no competition, mm. is she? Who told you that? Oh, the uh, same person who told us you click with the hotel manager with a gay reception. Is it right? I hardly spoke to What's him. What's his name? Ted Brownlow. What's he like? Is he nice? I told you I hardly spoke to him. You're going to see him again? Well, that's up to him, isn't it? Oh, times have changed, Elsie. You've got to act fast these days. You've got to get in and get a good grip on him. For the last time, I hardly spoke to him. And I thought you were a fast worker, didn't you? So did I. Hmm. I could leave you two standing if I really tried. Yeah, it's from Rita. It came this morning. Oh, I must say, it just looked quite exotic out there. I bet Len Fairclough hasn't sent any picture postcards. Oh, well, men aren't very good at that sort of thing, are they? What's it, sir? Please excuse the wobbly writing. Pardon? It's just a punchline of an old joke, love. Forget it. <gasps> no, she says, getting our fill of the three S's. Sunshine, sand and... Si no, I think it's C. Uh, the, the nightlife here is sensational. Do you know, she does it on purpose. Look, wish you were here. Maybe that's a question mark. She's asking you a question. She's saying, wish you were here. Oh, well, I wish I was somewhere. It's not easy, you know, running this place on your own. You know, I'm sure they had a better selection than this. All I can see is silly romances, spy stories and westerns. We ought to go to the proper library more often, Ernest. And here's one to end them all. Spy story and the hero's a cowboy. I don't read books, mate. They're all the same, them fellas, you know. Oh, a good book is the precious lifeblood of a master spirit, Mr. Ogden. Well, they're all pretending, aren't they? All making it up, you know. I like life as it is. Like you see in a pub. <laughs> well, I'll love you and leave it. And uh, see what Ill has got for my tea, you know. Well, haven't you just eaten a substantial meal, Mr. Ogden? Well, just to carry me on, you know, in case. She's trying to put me on a diet. Not with any great success, by the look of it, Stanley. I look daft, then. I keep telling her that, but she won't listen. How much saw you, love? Oh, it's uh, 44 pence, please. Right, the price of food is going up, isn't it? <sighs> Getting through, the man won't be able to afford to eat. There you are. You can Thank do with us in a bit, mate. Won't do you any harm. Watch it, mate. <laughs> what was said, love? <laughs> Thanks very much, Mavis. Oh, have you found anything you fancy? Oh, well, no, not really, Mavis. Uh, tumbleweed spy ring was the closest, and it wasn't as close as all that. <laughs> no, Bye. 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 Uh, give us my angling magazine, will you, Mavis? I'll get down to Rovers and do a bit. Are you still keen on fishing, then? Oh, aye. <laughs> no sport like it, love. Pitting your wits against the fish. I always thought fish was supposed to be stupid. Well, whoever reckoned that weren't a fisherman, Mavis. I'm going this Sunday. Quiet stretch of the river. The old rodden line. Oh, marvellous, marvellous. You know, you, you promised me that you'd take me with you sometime, Fred. Aye. Well, of course, I don't know if you meant it. Well, I wouldn't have said it if I didn't mean it, Mavis. Well, I, I'm not doing anything this Sunday. It'd be lovely to go fishing. Oh, come along if you want. My pleasure. Oh, thank you. 
Ta-da. Bye. Hello, Lola. Hi. How was my last then, eh? Um, don't mind her while she's feeding. She's been cranky all day. What do you mean, cranky? Well, just not her happy little brightest, a bit whingy. Oh, she's got a few teeth coming through. Oh, I don't think so. Not a three months. Her gums don't feel hard or anything. No, I think it's just an off day. <sighs> I heard about a plumbing job going to Bailey's factory today. Biggest job, but I reckon we could do it. I was wondering whether to put in a bid. Well, I suppose we can wait till Fairclough comes back before we do anything. Yeah, best thing. Yeah, All them little jobs that have to go mm. by the board for a month or two. Yeah, suppose so. Whoa. <laughs> Shh. Do you know, Ray, I've been thinking about Tracy. Don't you think it's about time we had a christening? You are? Well, I'm just saying about the christening. I mean, she's three months now. Are you serious? Of course I am. Well, what's brought this on? You don't, you don't really want a christen, do you? Yes, I do. Why not? Why not? Damn sight more the point of being wise. Well, I didn't think you'd be against it, Ray. Well, it's not that I'm against it. It's just that I think you need a pretty good reason to be for it, that's all. It's not really us. We don't even go to church. We didn't even get married in church. I don't see that's got anything to do with it. I just want to have a christen, that's all. Well, you do know what you've been letting yourself in for, don't you? Oh. All that palaver up at the church. Oh, blimey, dear Jack. I wouldn't care if we were church goers, but we're not, so what's the point? Look, people do have their babies christened. It's the thing to do. Oh, so that's why you want it, because other folks do it. That's got nothing to do with it. Yeah, well, you brought it up. Hey, come on, sweetheart. I'm starving. What are we having for us tea? That's typical of you, Langton. Every time you don't want to discuss something, you always fall back on your belly. Fancy coming fishing Sunday, Elf? Oh, yeah, time of the year, isn't it? Well, it isn't, it isn't. Of course, fishing's out of season. <laughs> if we stick to the rules. Which I do, and it suits me. Now, to prevent a bit of the old trout fishing, though, that's what I'm doing Sunday. Pursuing the old brown trout. Fancy it? Oh, I won't mind if it's a nice day. Well, don't start that faint hearted fair weather fishing, Elf. Might be teeming down. Now, are you coming or not? Oh, all right, let me make a change. Right, you're on. Mavis is coming. Yeah, well, I've just remembered I've got to do the lawn. Oh, no, 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 mate. You said you were coming and it's firm and binding. Look, what do you want me along for? If I do come along, I'm going to be breaking up a lovely twosome. That's what I want you there for, mate. You do it. You go and ask her. Or you go. You're better get you rounder than I am. Sounds to me as if you're frightened of her. Frightened of nothing, else. Go on. You know she always reckons you're like she was at our age. You are senior lodger, so that makes you like shops. It was your idea in the first place. Look, I tell you what, I'll go and ask You keep yourself. Elsie, well, you know you're always saying that we should treat your house as our home until you get a place of your own. Oh, until we get a place of our own. But does that mean we can occasionally ask the old friend round? You mean them two lads over there? Well, I don't see why not. They don't look too bad to me. Oh, they're not. They're not. No trouble, dead quiet. Oh, I think if there were no trouble and dead quiet, you wouldn't be interested in them. All right, you can ask him round, provided you don't go playing hide and seek in the wardrobe, or anywhere else for that matter. Why should you want to hide from? Good question. Do you know, I've hardly stopped today, and I don't feel as if I've got a thing done. And now I have a pile of nappies at home, and I don't feel like tackling them tonight, I can tell you. Well, you've got a husband. Why don't you ask Rachel? <laughs> There's a snag to that. We're not speaking at the moment. Oh, wait, what's up? Well, I just said it were about time we got Tracy christened, and he flew off the handle. He said it were daft because we weren't churchgoers ourselves. I think it's him that's daft, don't we? Uh, no comment. Eh? I'm not joining in that one, love. I'll argue about anything else, but not about religion. And you can't do your seat. No one you've a shop to run. Well, don't tell me you're on his side. I said no comment about religious matters. It's the first commandment in the shopkeeper's Bible. All right, all right. Right, then, let's get back to basics. Uh... Give us a packet of disposable nappies. It should see me through the night. Oh, love, I don't stock them. The nearest place I know is McIntyre's in Precinct. And I think they'll be closed now. Oh, heck. That is my evening sorted out. <laughs> I am tackling a mountain of mucky nappies. Are you all right for washing powder? I stock that. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Healthy Howard. Oh. Hello, Ted Brownlow. Of course I remember you. <laughs> nice of you to call. Tonight, uh, yeah. well, well, nothing, actually. It... Yeah, sure, I'd love to. Nice of you to ask. Uh, well, whatever time suits you. Up, up at seven, eight o'clock. I... Yeah. Yeah, fine, I know exactly what you mean. Uh, well, don't expect Buckingham Palace, will you? 
Right. See you later. Well, fancy that. Oh. <laughs> One of you has had that new pair of tights out of my dressing table drawer. I only borrowed them. Well, I want them back. You've got them in your hand. Marvellous, flaming marvellous. Is there nothing oh, sacred? Borrow a pair of mine if you're going somewhere special. That is very considerate of you, I must say. Oh, well, it's the least we can do, you know, seeing as how you're going out so we can have Kevin and Rod round. I've got news for you. I'm not going out tonight. You're going out tonight. Kevin and Rod are coming. They've only gone to get Kevin's records. I don't care if Kevin and Rod have gone to get their fur line football boots. You are going out tonight. I'm stopping in. I've got company coming. Oh, well, so you said we could have the house tonight. We've got a change of plan. Look, when I told you you could have them lads round here, I didn't mean to say I was going to walk the streets till midnight so you could have a clear field. Well, you'll upset Gail. I mean, she has promised Kevin and Rod that we're going to play strip monopoly. <laughs> No, I believe you, but I wouldn't put it past her. Oh, we know where else to go, else we got no money and the lads are skint as well. Oh, you don't know you're born. Skint? You know, we never had any money when I was your age. You know what I used to do? I used to hang around the temperance bar and go for a stroll around the park. Big deal. Anyway, who's this company you've got coming? Ted Brownlow, and you ought to be very pleased, seeing as he rang up and, and how hard you tried to get me off with him a short while ago. Yeah, but you could have asked him round another night. I just told you, he rang up, he invited himself, I didn't ask oh, him. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. It's a bit mean, is that, inviting you out to your own front room? Next thing he'll be inviting you to pictures and asking you to meet him inside. <laughs> Can we have less sauce from you, madam, please? And you, would you mind getting up them stairs and getting him in that pair of tights? Let me make myself look halfway decent. Well, I still think you could have asked him round tomorrow night. That'll be Kevin and Rod. What am I going to tell them? Oh, no doubt you'll think of something like get lost. Oh, kids. It's for you, Elsie. It's a gentleman. Hello. Am I a bit early? Well, if I said you weren't, you'd think I was dressed for the evening, wouldn't you? <laughs> I'm not in tonight, I see. Oh. Is she working a late turn at the hospital? No, no, just catching up on the housework. <laughs> I'd have thought you'd have been the sort that would have given her a helping hand, you know, especially with her having a full-time job. I am, Betty, I am. Cross me heart. I was quite willing to do it this evening. And she said I was getting under her feet and she's bunged me out for an hour. <laughs> Hello, Joe. I brought Mrs. Marcus magazine for boy. I forgot to leave it this morning. I know I did, love. Yes. The matter has been commented on. Maybe. Oh, if yes. you've finished work, you need a drink. Oh, no, thank you very much. I haven't got the time. I have to get back and we'll start sorting things out for tomorrow. It's too much it's for one too... person on their own. Please. Never mind, maybe. She'll be away from it all on Sunday. Relaxing on that river bank, breathing in the fresh air. Back to Mother Nature, oh, eh? Sounds wonderful. Alf's coming with us. Oh, it's developing into quite an outing. Tell you what, we could make a foursome of it. Nice out figure four. Get that girl from the denim factory that pops in your place, maybe. Uh, she's got that a nice, blonde girl. She'll have a nice round figure and all oh, of it. I think I know the one you mean. Sandra, that's her name, Sandra. I bet she's got a lovely nature. Oh, I couldn't say as to a name or a nature, I'm afraid. <laughs> Listen, next time she pops in your place, maybe, put it to her about a trip on Sunday, will you? Just stir uh, thought, like. Oh, you know. I suppose I could do if she comes in. Anyway, back to the grindstone. Oh, I'll be glad when Rita comes back, I can tell you. You know what, mate? I get the feeling that I am being manipulated. I mean, first of all, it's you or Mavis going on this trip. Then I'm roped in. Now this blonde from the factory. I can't say I like the way things are going, because I know who's going to end up with who. <sighs> Toss you for it, mate. I want to be fair. Why? Have you got a double-headed penny? <laughs> you know, the smoked salmon is delicious. You can come again. Glad you like it. No, oh, I do. You know, if ever I come into money, if ever Ernie gives me a really big prize, I shall eat smoked salmon all the time. I hope you didn't mind my bringing the grub. It seemed a pity to waste it. <laughs> it would have been criminal. Do you know what I'd have for my tea? Beans on toast. Ah. Look, try the quiche. I think you'll find it's nice and light. Mm. One of the chef's specialities. This wine's nice and light, too. Uh, what did you call it? Chablis. Ah, yes, Chablis. Mind you, a couple of years ago, and I thought it was a bottle of vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you like it, Sarah. Yeah, I do. One of the few compensations for being in the hotel business. Uh... What? Raid right in the fridge? Mm. You know, it must be very hard work and sometimes very trying. Oh, I don't know. Getting away is the hardest part. I've got a flat in the hotel, you know. 
But when I'm off duty, the staff knows I'm there, and uh, if I can see any problems coming up, it's best to get right away. Well, I've told you, you could always come here, providing you bring the smoked salmon. Well, you come and have dinner at the hotel with me next time. Bring the daughters, too, uh, if they'd like to come. Who? Your daughters. Oh, you mean <laughs> Gail and Susie? Oh, no, they're not my daughters, although I sometimes feel like it. No, they're just my lodgers. Oh, I see. I thought... <laughs> you don't look like a landlady. You make me feel like one of them, too, sometimes. No, you see... Susie had been chucked out, and so had Gail, and I took Gail in at a weak moment, and Susie wormed her way in, and, uh, well, they've been here. I uh, keep telling them they have to go, but it falls on deaf ears. Mm, probably because they know you don't mean it. Oh, I do, I do, I think. Still, they are company. Yeah, I know what you mean. I've been a widower now for close on ten years. Knocked me for six at the time, but time's a great healer, so they say. Have you ever thought of remarrying? Once or twice. And when I got myself in a state of chaos and thought I needed a woman to straighten myself out. Nothing really serious, though. My kids always used to tell me to get married again. I've got two. A boy in Australia doing engineering and the girls in Portsmouth teaching. Oh, so you're on your own here? Yeah. But like you, not much time to feel lonely. Tell you the truth, I've got to enjoy the freedom. <laughs> what about you? You any children? Yeah, same as you, boy and a girl. Living with your husband in Newcastle? No, they've, uh, they've flown the nest. You know this, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Peace of rain. Yeah, I knew it was a long word. <laughs> it's absolutely delicious, much better than baked beans. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Oh, I do. Pass on your compliments to the chef. Do, do, do. <laughs> I think I might need the benefit of your advice, actually. Um, I want a bottle of wine. Aniston, you aren't usually booze, this. Um... That one at £1.25. Is that one nice? Oh, well, I sell quite a lot of it. It's not bad at the price. It's so dear nowadays. I've got to remember, you know, though, it's bottled sunshine, is this? Now, this one's Italian, and it's not bad. It's better if it's warmed a bit. Put it near the fire, you know, for about half an hour. Take the cork off. It makes all the difference. Well, I'll take it then. <sighs> Special occasion of some sort? Well, in a way, it is, yes. It's the anniversary of our first meeting, Ernest and I. Oh. <laughs> I've been making him a special little supper. That's why I wanted the wine. Oh. Will you be getting a present from you? Oh, no. He doesn't remember these things. I expect he will when I remind him. Though. Well, you do. You just jog his memory. Why shouldn't they be as sentimental as we are? No. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Bye. Uh, oh. oh. Whatever is to do with you, you look as weary as a rag and bone man's oh, arse. I just this minute finished at the cabin, and I was there before seven this morning. Oh, just like me, all hours God says. And you know, to cap it all, I've run out of coffee, so if anybody wants a cup tomorrow, I will have to turn them away. Unless you can let me have a jar of instant. Well, look, don't tell Rita, cos she goes on shocking if I forget to order things from the whole service. I'll not say a word. Oh, As a matter you. of fact, you're the first to buy coffee for a week or two. At the price it's gone to, people have stopped buying it. And honestly, I can't say I blame them. Oh, do you know, the, oh, there was something else I wanted, but... Oh, I'm just that tired, I can't think. Tell you what. How about a nice cup of tea? I'm just closing oh. anyway. I'll put kettle on and we'll just have five oh, minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I can't stay long because of my auntie Edie, because she worries, you know. And, and, well, I haven't told her yet about uh, this coming Sunday. I'm going on a fishing trip with Reggie and Alf Roberts. Oh, quite a little outdoor girl, aren't you? Do you know what? Our Terry was always threatening me to take me fishing. Did he? <laughs> you might know. Well, why don't you come with us on Sunday? Oh, wouldn't they mind? Oh, no, I'm sure they wouldn't. I mean, Fred would just say, perhaps I could find somebody else to make up a foursome. Oh, well, if I'll be doing them a favour. Right, I'll come. <laughs> well, I think you're being very unreasonable. <laughs> Not me that's being unreasonable. Anybody who think there was something wrong with having babies christened? I've got nothing against christenings as such. It's just this particular christening. Well, it's hypocrisy, isn't it? When did we last go to church? We were in a church only a few days since at Len and Rita's wedding. That is not what I mean, and you know it. We didn't have our wedding in the church, and that just goes to prove what I'm saying. It does not prove anything. It's got nothing to do with having Tracy christened. Well, it's got everything to do with it. If we have her christened, it'd just be a pretense, that's all. No, it won't. You're standing there all dressed up. New shawl for the kid. Christening presents at home. Godparents promising they'll see Tracy goes to church every week and never doing a damn thing about it. 
Come on, Deirdre, it'd just be a lot of play acting. Well, I don't see it that way. I just want to have a christen, that's all. What we really ought to do is leave it up to her. When she's old enough to know what it's all about, she can make her own mind up. My man was really looking forward to seeing her granddaughter christened. Oh, that's what it's all about, eh? Pleasing Blanche. That has got nothing to do with it. Well, I say it has. And you can tell her that it's now to do with her and she can mind her own business. Look, Ray, I don't care what you say. She's my daughter as well as yours and we are going to have a christen whether you like it or not. The future, let's hope it's good. Better than the past. Well, it's been kind enough to you. Uh, I wear well. <laughs> I'll second that. The future. The future. Well, much as I've been enjoying myself, I really think I'd better be making tracks. I've got a meeting early tomorrow morning to sort out a few of the forthcoming functions at the hotel. Correction, that meeting was this morning. It's after midnight. Shh. I didn't realise it was as late as that. You better be going before you turn into a pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've really enjoyed this evening. Thanks. I've enjoyed it too. Uh, Gail, Susie, stop playing about on them stairs and say, come and say good evening to Ted. Well, we didn't want to intrude or anything. <laughs> I was just off anyway. So I'll say hello again to you young ladies and uh, good night. Good night. I'll see good you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Hey, he's not bad for an old bloke. Not is he? bad. <gasps> They've been scoffing smoked salmon. They were in half good. When the fella brings all his own goodies, look, they've been drinking Chateau Posh as well. <laughs> Hello, the vultures are scavenging again. Oh, it's all right for some. We shared one bag of grist between two lads. What's that? Quiche Lorraine, called bacon and egg pie for the ignorant. Is it good? It's trumpeters. Hey, I think we'd like this new boyfriend of ours, Elsie. Well, he's not exactly my boyfriend, but whatever he is, he's not ours, he's mine. Tell him he can come whenever he wants. You seen him again? Have you got off with him, Elsie? <laughs> oh, we'll have to wait and see, won't we? I'm going to bed. Wash up when you finish, won't you? Good night. <laughs> Dr. Chris Steele is available to answer your medical queries over on Granada Good Life now. Coming up next on Granada Plus, more Anglo-Antipodean intrigue in families.